Hello, my pretty awkward fam. Welcome back to another heart to heart. Today's episode has a, I don't know. I think it's a funny title. I was like, well, what's on my mind? What do I want to talk about? And these were three of the biggest things. So we were talking about sacrifice and business comparison and trying to conceive very random thrown in there, but you know, these episodes, if you are new to my world, hello, I'm so happy to have you here. These hard to heart episodes really are my behind the scenes, what's going on in my world and really what is top of mind for me. I'm peeling back the curtain a little bit. I'm sharing my thoughts kind of in real time. As long as I'm like, feel like I can, you know, there's certain things in life that you should share after you've processed. Um, as I say, I feel like every other episode at this point, uh, share from the scar, not the wound. And so some of those things I won't be sharing in real time, but some I will. And so that's what these are. It's just raw, real, unedited. Let's go. Well, maybe there's some edits. Thank you, Hobby, who edits the podcast. Okay, let's dive in. I am all over the place today. I'm in a really good mood. I'm very high energy. So it's it's from a good place. It's coming from a good place. Um, first off, I don't even have this inside my title or anything, but I started this morning, um, looking at my program, my group program, it's called smart online success Academy, but it's re being rebranded to accelerator. Uh, and we're doing a relaunch and a rebrand in April. And I'm redoing a lot of the curriculum. I'm keeping a ton of stuff the same, like the base, because it works so well. Students have been getting incredible results from it for years and years. I've had this program in different editions since end of 2018. So it's tried and true, but just like anything, you learn new things, the industry changes, social media changes, all of that. So I recommend if you are, have been in business longer, or even if you're just starting and like note this for the future, you want to update your stuff. Even if you don't have necessarily a course and modules, look at your process, look at your framework, your method that you're taking people through when they come into your program, what are the steps that you take them through? Right. A lot of times that won't change. It's just going to stay the same because humans are humans, but a lot of the time it will I kind of just contradict myself <laughs> or so I should say certain aspects will. So shameless plug uh, next week, make sure you pay attention to the ad in Monday's episode. If you're listening to this in real time, because I am releasing a free workshop, but it's all about creating your signature frame framework. So you can stand out in a saturated industry, essentially what's going to make your offer different. And how do you really kind of cut through the noise and back your offer, especially in the beginning, when you're in those first few years, you are in constant comparison, right? You're just like, like there's so many more established people out here. There's so many people who've been doing it longer than me. Why is someone to choose me? But I know I meant to do this, right? You're having these two like kind of opposing feelings. And so this, this creating your uh, signature framework workshop is really going to give you that like stake in the ground to just feel so confident about what you're doing with your clients and how to communicate it. That's the biggest thing, right? It's like, once they're in, we know we can rock and roll, but it's how do we get them in, especially when there's so many people out there marketing themselves doing essentially the same thing, right? So that's what we're going to be going over. So more details to come next week, definitely be on the lookout. You're not going to want to miss that. It's going to be live there will be some kind of replay for a, a, a short amount of time, but I'm doing lots of goodies for people on live as per usual, which a uh, little inception here, do that. When you have live anything, you got to make it enticing and incentivize people to come on live. Otherwise they will just catch the recording. And we know, I know if I go to something live, I am so much more likely to engage in it, to actually pay attention. Um, and fun fact, we are not actually selling anything at the end of this workshop. So it's literally just value. I promise you we're not selling anything. So there you go. That's fun fact too. So I want to talk about Oh, comparison was one thing I want to talk about. We'll get there, but I want to talk about this theme of sacrifice in business. I'm going to be having a um, former client. She was a client of mine, gosh, for like almost three years and is one of my closest friends now. I absolutely adore her. She's going to be coming on the podcast soon in the next, uh, we're recording our episode in the next few weeks. It'll probably be coming on the next few months, but Isabella Sanchez, you can definitely go follow her. She's incredible. I love her. If you just look up Isabella, I think it's the Isabella Sanchez on Instagram. I'm pretty sure there's a the before her name. 
Um, so her and I have been just having this discussion a lot lately, uh, cause we're really good friends and we've worked together for so many years. I coached her for like three and a half years and we have very similar values, very similar styles in that sense. And this is a conversation that she's really brought up a lot with her audience. And I brought up a lot with my audience in the last, honestly, few years is the, the theme of sacrifice, right? And I'm not going to go too deep into it because I do want to save it for when she comes on and she's going to give her perspective in such a beautiful way. But there's something that, you know, at the beginning of this year or the end of last year, I, I released an episode and I talked about these themes that I'm, oh, can you hear that? airplane. I hope not. Um, these themes that I really wanted to lean into this year is start and scale without sacrifice. And the reason I haven't been saying it a ton like that is because of this exact conversation. When I started talking about that a few months ago, I mean, I've been talking about it for quite a long time, but when I like made an episode about it a few months ago, I had to say caveat, I had to say, start without sacrifice, scale without sacrifice, but I mean, not sacrificing your mental health, your relationships, well, the ones that are the most important to you, right? Because a lot of times we end up losing friendships when we grow in our business and in our, in our, in our personal life. Uh, that's very common. I've had it. And those are ones that we're meant to outgrow, I believe. Um, so I don't mean those, but your personal relationships, your marriage, things like that. Um, and our physical health, our mental health, like we should not I mean, in my opinion, right. You to each his own. I have a funny story about this, but in my opinion, and I, I refuse to teach people how to have success when jeopardizing that, like to know when I want you to just hustle, 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 grind, 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 and basically, you know, kill your hormones, like ruin your relationships, um, you know, burnout so that you have to take a year off. Like these are literally things that people have been experiencing. I've coached a few people on the other side who are like, Hey, this is what happened. I had a lot of success. And then I burnt out because I did sacrifice. I worked nonstop. I didn't take care of my body or my mental well-being or my relationships. And now everything feels like it's on fire. Right. And so that's what I mean when I say without sacrifice, but what I don't mean is that you're going to be able to necessarily do everything that you're doing now, right? For example, when I started my first business and honestly, even now, like I'm in a really busy season right now, I'm redoing a whole program. I'm coaching my clients. I'm planning a retreat for my mastermind. I'm in the middle of a warm up for a launch. I'm giving you guys so much free, incredible content. I love doing this. Like we're doing a lot over here, right? But I'm sleeping, I'm exercising, I'm seeing friends. I'm, you know, I'm still, I'm, my husband and I are still number one priority. Like we're still doing that. That being said, I'm definitely watching less TV, still watching it a little bit, not gonna lie. I'm definitely watching less TV. I'm definitely not probably seeing friends as much as I could uh, because I'm in a busy season. And when we first start, when you're in that hustle and grind kind of first few years, you're going to have to sacrifice. You're going to have, you have to change who you are to get to where you want to be. Right. And not like to your core, your, your values or anything that's going to always be you. But if your habits right now are not resulting in what you want, then you have to change them. Right. Unless it's one of those, like, you just need to see it through because it's the domino effect and, and consistency is key. But for example, let's say you're just starting your business and you are creating content for the first time, like really consistently, like you were always sharing your journey. You were, you were very open about that, but now you're like, oh, I want to actually create content to sell. I want my, I want to attract clients on social media from my content. I want them to read my content and go, oh, I need this person's help. I'm going to inquire. I'm going to DM them. Right. By the way, having a signature framework helps people DM you more. Okay. Shameless plug over. I don't even have a link for it yet. So you can't even sign up yet, but get ready. Um, anyway, I, I crack myself up. So say you want to, to do that. You want to get more DMs directly from your content. Someone messaging you saying, oh my gosh, this is exactly like what you just said resonated. Do you help people with this? Can I get help from you? Right. That's the dream. That's what everyone wants. Right. And say that's something you haven't really done. You've only just randomly shared your journey, but you haven't actually thought, what does my audience need to hear? You're going to have to spend some time figuring that out. 
right? And that could be getting to understand them inside and out. What are their thoughts? What are their feelings? What are their fears? What keeps them up at night? What are the problems they're experiencing? What are their desires? What are their short-term goals? And what are their long-term desires and dreams? You might have to go do the research, like go to other accounts that have similar followers as you, that you, that you want to have, right. Uh, see what people are commenting, go into Facebook groups, see what people are asking, um, go in the, well, I already said this, but like really go to the comments of these other accounts and see what people are commenting and replying, see what's getting the most engagement, go to Amazon and look at Amazon book reviews. Like there's so many places you can go and get this information that's going to take time. And that's probably something you haven't done. So that's an example, right? That's going to add, let's say you do an hour of research a week, right? I recommend in the beginning doing more, more than that, because that's going to be a huge piece of the puzzle. You can't just rely on your own experience because you're too removed from it. If you have transformed, I had a talk with someone um, a few weeks ago who is a perfect ideal client for my program coming up. And we were doing some market research and she realized that she was like, I'm so far removed from the beginning. Like I, I know my client because I was my client, but I'm on the other side. And it's like, you can't see it from the same lens anymore. It's really hard to go so back there. I mean, you can to a point, like you should share your story, of course, but you need to be reminded, Right. So for example, I am, gosh, how many years into business now? I'm 10 years into business. Um, my, this third business, I started in 2017, 2018, really all, all in, in 2018. So that's been five years, right? Five years since I started yet, I'm still selling a beginning business program, a program for people just starting. I can't just rely on my memory, which is why, like I just told you, I actually still get on market research calls. I still ask my audience. I still, even though like, I think I know the answer. I, if I don't do that, I'm going to lose touch and that takes time. And so that's just one, that's one part of writing effective content. Then you have to assemble everything. And then you have to maybe learn a little bit about writing good copy, how to become a better writer or how to make a video, right? How to use apps like TikTok or, or Instagram or InShot, which is a great app to put videos together or CapCut. Like that's another learning curve. There's a lot, there's a lot that goes into this one thing that doesn't include how to run sales calls, how to onboard your clients, how to coach them effectively. Like there's so many other factors here. And we're just talking about one thing, right? It's a big thing. Creating content is literally what will attract clients to you. If you're using social media, content is the thing, but it's how do you do it? There's so many little facets. And I don't say this to overwhelm you. I say this to, to really paint the, the picture or get the point across that that means you're going to have to put more time in. That means you're going to have to, the time that you spent maybe watching TV, doing something else, doing another hobby, you're going to have to put into this. And I made a reel a bit ago and it was a TikTok too. And I, I transferred it to reels because it did really well on TikTok for my account. And it got a little bit of not hate. Most of it was like, I agree with you, but I basically said like intense anti-hustle culture is really making people feel like they don't have to do anything to have success. And that's just not true. You are going to have to sacrifice. You're going to have to give up some hobbies. You're going to have to give up some time, not forever, right? I'm not saying like, you can't do anything fun, not at all. But if you want to actually build your business, the way you're operating now you've got to change something. You've got to replace some of those hours with this learning, with this implementation, right? And I know you want it. So you're going to, you're willing to do that, but this is the thing. Like I see people always say like, you can just build a business in such short time, doing what you love, et cetera. Yes. But you are going to have to put in the work with very little return in the beginning. And I just wanted to have that conversation again, because I know I've said scale without sacrifice and start without sacrifice. Okay. Luna. My dog is barking and I don't want you to have to deal with that. Okay. She has calmed down. She was probably barking at the neighbors as per usual. She doesn't understand that they're allowed to be there. It's okay. She's a very good guard dog, even though she's very small. Um, so anyway, I just really wanted to get that across because I, there's a, there's a fine line, right? You're going to have to sacrifice some stuff to really get your business off the ground but then you do not want to go the pendulum swing to where you're ignoring your relationships, right? Your spouse hasn't seen you in how long you have ignored your children. And I'm, I'm saying things that I've literally 
heard from direct from clients or friends that they've done, right? This isn't made up. This is actual experience. Um, I, some of this me, right? I definitely ignored my spouse for quite a long time and did not need to. Your health, you're never exercising. You're never moving your body. You're never going for a walk. You're not, you're not prioritizing healthy foods. Like your mental health, you're constantly scrolling. You're constantly on social media. That's the other side of the coin. So there is this like middle ground. I'm not gonna say that we're balanced because I don't know if that's possible with any of this, right? There's seasons in my in my book. I've I've really only ex- ever experienced seasons, but there is this pendulum. And we have to realize that there are some things like we're going to have to give up. And so something that really helps me, and I say give up for a very little bit, little amount of time. It doesn't mean you're going to forever have to, um, but also you're just going to become a different person. You're not going to want to necessarily do the things that you used to do. Like prime example for me is I used to drink alcohol very regularly. Like every single weekend I was out having drinks with my friends or my husband. And that was like a huge part of our life. It was like a very big part of our social life. I very rarely drink. I very rarely. And if I do, I have one now. It's just not a part of my life. I've gotten a lot of time back from that. I used to be tired the next day. I would do subpar work or just wouldn't work usually if if it was on a weekend and my productivity is off the chart. So that's something personally I decided to give up. It just wasn't like serving me anymore. And I'm just at my age, I literally cannot have it without not feeling great the next day. It's wild. So that's just an example. That's one little example. But I really wanted to talk that through because it's just been a repeating conversation I've been having. And there is that fine line, right? You do not need to burn yourself out. You shouldn't. Um, I wanted to share something really funny. Let me, I took a screenshot. So I was messaging some people who follow me, who've been engaging with my stuff over the past and inviting them to join my freebie, right? Just be like, hey, in case you missed it, you know, the algorithm does not, <laughs> does not always serve us well. And sometimes people won't see your stuff and they won't even see that you have something for them to opt into that really can help them. And so I wanted to make sure. And she said, hey, uh, no, I'm good. Thank you though. And I said, no problem. And you're welcome. <laughs> she said back to me and I'm dying laughing. And I was like, you know, you go girl, like to each his own. She said, yeah, I'm not your ideal client, honestly, because I don't care about personal relationships. My boyfriend is literally my dead last priority. And I like to keep it that way. I was dying. I said, I said like, no problem. You do you. But I was just like, I could stop laughing. I was like, you're definitely not my ideal client then. And that's totally cool. And I, the reason I wanted to share that, not only because I just thought it was funny, but like, that's her prerogative and that's her choice. And there's definitely a coach out there for her. Who's like, Hey, zoned in. That's it. Right. Where personally I'm in this place, which is a great segue we're trying to have a family this year. We're, we're, that's our main goal. And we're literally starting to try this week. TMI. I don't know. We do that on this podcast, um, because we had to wait for some stuff. I'll explain that in a second, but I, I, that's like, that's how I'm building my business. Everything that I am doing this year, everything I've been doing is structured around. Can this sustain a baby? Can I do this when I have a baby? It's why my group program is structured the way it is. It's why my mastermind is structured the way it is. It's why my one-on-one coaching is structured the way it is, right? Everything is, is in line with that. And similarly, I only hire mentors who, um, either are moms or structure their business that way. My current mentor is not a mom actually, but the way she structures her business easily she can have a kid. Like that's how she structures it. Right. And so, and that's what I do. And I, I would say 75% of my clients are actually moms. And I think that's a really big reason that they're attracted to me is one, they know that's like a huge goal of mine. And it's been for, gosh, I feel like forever since I was a little kid. Uh, but it's been publicly a goal of mine for quite a long time. But two is because that is just something that I, I really build for not even like, even if it wasn't for a family, it was just to do stuff like to build a business, to perform for me personally. I love performing to travel, to have just space, to do other stuff. Like I love my business, but I don't want to be working in it, in it 24 seven. Now I like to work. I actually really do like working and I, and I don't work four hour weeks or anything like that. I probably work more than a lot of people I know, but I like it. Like I'm doing stuff I love. So it's not that, but I really wanted to build a model that could easily support a family and I could easily take a step back or continue doing what I'm doing. And it's not going to affect me being with my baby and family, et cetera. So that's, uh, I just had to share that because I was laughing and I was like, 
she's so right. I'm not, you know, if, if your significant other and your family is your dead last priority, I'm probably not the coach for you because mine is my first priority <laughs> so much so that I, I stepped a lot back in my business in two years. I could be way further ahead financially if I didn't. Um, but that's cause it wasn't my first priority. And so <laughs> that's, I was just like laughing so hard. I had to share that. Uh, and you know, Hey, I was like very impressed that she said that I was like, I'm impressed with the honesty. Like we, and this is the thing, like we're going to attract and repel the right people. Right. So do not worry if you are putting your line, drawing your line in the sand, like something that you think people wouldn't argue with or not argue, but wouldn't disagree with. They are even mine. Right. I, I never think thought people would be like, Oh no, I don't want to prioritize my family or my relationships, but she doesn't want to, and that's okay. And you know, maybe if I was like, when I look back, I mean, in my early twenties or my mid twenties, I definitely wasn't, <laughs> I didn't have a family. I didn't have, um, a significant relationship. I mean, I did, but it wasn't obviously significant enough that I probably had the same attitude. So it's, it's, it was a different life. Right. And that's something too, you want to remember, like you got to meet your client where they're at. And this is why, like, you don't have to niche down this specific, but I think it can be really powerful in the beginning because you can get that granular. You can get that specific. And when you're like, I'm helping people in their mid twenties, like find what their purpose is. You can really dive into what is someone at that stage in their life, in that part of their journey, what are they going through? And you can like, get so nitty gritty and detailed, which is really cool. And just become known as the person for that. So Anywho, I digress. I had to share that. So this is the week that my husband and I are starting to try to conceive. I use something called, and I wanted to share this honestly, just because I don't want to keep, I don't want to gatekeep really great information. Um, I've mentioned it. I'm pretty sure in the past, but I've used a bracelet called Ava, A-V-A, um, shout out to one of my really good friends, Rachel Engome. She's been a guest on the podcast. She's amazing. She told me about it and she was like, you got to get this bracelet. It's, it's amazing. And it tracks everything. I'm actually going to bring the app up really quick, um, and share with you. And if you're not, um, interested in any of this, I totally, <laughs> I totally get it. No offense taken. If you're like, bye, I got what I needed from this episode. I'm going to share a little bit more at the end about comparison. Uh, but I want to just really quickly share this because I think it's so, so cool and share with your friends. If it's not for you, share with your friends. So it goes over your, it measures your resting pulse, your skin temperature, your breathing rate, your sleep and your HRV ratio. I don't know what that is. I'm forgetting what that is. Um, but I even have like my cycle history, how many days on average my cycle has been. It does your pulse history, your temperature, your breathing rate. Like I can see an average across and it, it tracks your period. And then you obviously put in, was this accurate? And you log that. And then it tracks your ovulation and it tracks it like from high fertility to the day you ovulate. So it's like, so I've, um, high fertility, uh, I'm high, have high fertility for three days. And then I have peak fertility in the last day is ovulation. And that way, like you can do the deed on those days and be a little bit more intentional. And I tracked last time we got pregnant after two cycles and I track, which is pretty quick. <laughs> and I tracked very meticulously. I went to, all I did was go to sleep with this bracelet and then log my at my log the app every morning. It literally takes one minute. And I did that for a few months before we even started trying. So they had a lot of data. So it was pretty accurate. And I've been doing it ever since after my miscarriage, I stopped until I got my period again. And then I think I've been wearing it pretty regularly since like, I would say August of last year, September. Cause my miscarriage was in May, May. Yeah. So probably August after I got my period again, and it was the end of May. So really like June and I tracked, I've been tracking. And so that t tells me we're ovulating this week. So, uh, it's pretty great. It's, it's not cheap. I'm forgetting how much I paid for it. I think it was around two, two fifty. but man, I would pay a thousand bucks for this. I'd pay more than that, honestly, because it worked. It really helped us know when things were going on. And so we're really excited. Um, you know, I'm personally approaching it just as what's meant to be will be. If it happens just as quick as last time, amazing. If it doesn't, that's, it is what it is, you know? And I just feel so what this past year, honestly, few years with everything that we've went through in my life, 
it's just taught me to trust and to really let go of timelines. And so of course, do I want it to happen on the first time? Duh, who doesn't if you're actively trying, but I'm really trusting because so much, so many things that have happened, um, that sucked, that were not what I wanted, right. Wasn't planned. I saw the purpose after, I mean, it took me a while, but I, I could, I think my friend Shalane shared this with me yesterday. She's like, I think it was Steve Jobs who said, you can connect the dots. You can't connect the dots forward. You can only connect them backwards and you can go, Oh, this is why. And so even like us starting now, we got the go ahead beginning of December. And so that's December, January, February, three months, three full months. We didn't still weren't trying because we wanted to get our health insurance figured out. We had a really not great experience with our health insurance that we were on from my miscarriage. We had to lay out a ton of money for my surgery and we're in a very good position where we can do that. And I'm very grateful for that, but I don't want to have to do that. Why are we paying for this insurance if it's not going to help us at all? And so we had to figure that out. Being self-employed is fun in the U.S., in that way. And so that took a while that took a little bit of time. And so we're all set now, which is great. And so we wanted to just wait until we were, um, you have to be on it for a certain amount of time. So that was like, we actually started it in January, but you have to be on it for a certain amount of time before you, um, can get pregnant. So if I get, if I did get pregnant the first try, we would technically not have been covered. I was like, all right, we waited this long. We can wait like one more month. Let's just wait. And so, so that's the news. Um, you know, I'm not going to probably share until I'm three months into my pregnancy when it does happen, um, like most people and not because of the rule or anything like that. Like, I'm going to tell my friends, my closest friends and family right away. I I just, I I know I can't not. And honestly, it's because when, when we miscarried, those were the people I, I wanted there for me and they were. So I didn't, I didn't mind that they knew because I wanted them to be there for me. I wanted them to console me. I wanted them to help me and, and just love on me and all of that. So it's not even for that. It's more so just because we just want to keep it to ourselves for a little bit and just relish in that. I share a lot online. I share a lot of my life and my husband is very gracious. And he's such an open book. He's like, whatever, like, let's share anything. I don't care. <laughs> he just doesn't care. He really doesn't. And especially if he, he's like, if it can help someone go for it. Like he's really an open book and very comfortable. Um, and I know not a lot of people are, and I get it. I totally get it. But this is something that we've decided, like, we're going to keep private. So, um, I'm not going to talk about it too, too much. I, I might occasionally when I'm like, you know, feeling a day or whatever. Um, but that's starting. And so it's just funny because when, when I relate it to business, again, it just reconfirms the way we're building things, the structure, the business model. Um, and I'm really excited about it. Like you've heard me say on last few episodes, like I've, I just feel so much more intentional and I feel like I have so much more clear direction than I've had in a long time. And that feels really good. It feels really good. And so my, kind of hopeful inspiration to you is if you felt a little lost lately or even last year, last few years, there's a light at the end of the tunnel. You're going to get through it. And one of the biggest things that helped me was giving myself space, like true space. And then lastly, and this was the other word in the title of this episode is putting my blinders on. I was reminded of this recently. I was on a podcast interview, um, yesterday, actually. I was recording. Um, I've been on a lot of interviews lately. I'm doing like a podcast tour. And so, gosh, I think I've already recorded like 15 or 16 in the last like two weeks. It's been wild. It's been amazing. Um, I love podcasting. It's so fun. Um, and so I've been on a lot of podcasts and I've been, you know, asking my people ask your story and all that. And a lot of people ask like, how did you grow so quickly? Etc. And I always say, well, one, I didn't. One, I, I had uh, two businesses before this one. And so while this feels and seems to the outside like it was quick, it wasn't. <laughs> I had a lot of experience on what to do and what not to do for like four years before I even started this business. So that's something I always remind people of. But two is I had such naivete in this business. Like I had my blinders on so hard. I was not scrolling 
I was not tapping through. I wasn't watching anyone's stories. I had no clue what people were, were doing so much so that when I had like mastermind meetups and stuff with the masterminds I was in and people would say, Oh, did you hear about so-and-so? I'd be like, who is so-and-so? I don't even know who you're talking about. Like I was so out of it. And, you know, probably a little too far out of it. I, I should be in the know with some things, but honestly, probably not because there are people on social media. It wasn't anything in the world. It wasn't anything that I need to know, right. Just to be like, like aware of what's going on. It was like coaching industry gossip. And I didn't even know people's names. I literally didn't know who these people were. And apparently they were very well known. And it's just so funny when I think back and I think like, I was talking about this on an episode yesterday. I think part of it is part of it is just that at the age, like I'm 35 right now. And when this all was happening, I was like 32, 33. And most of the people that I was were, that I was with in these programs were younger. Most of them were like 25, 26, some were even younger than that. And I'm like a good seven years older, which doesn't seem like a lot, but I feel like you do a lot of growing up between those ages. And my friend, I'm not going to pretend I'm above a gossip who doesn't once in a while, like a good gossip. We all love gossip girl for a reason, right? So I'm not going to pretend that I never partake, but when I really grew, I should say, I really try not to, because it just doesn't help anyone. When I really grew, I was so out of that. I was so out of that. And when people would bring it up, I'd be like, I have no clue what you're talking about because I'm like, so in my zone and guess what? It really helped me grow, really helped me grow. And for two reasons, one, I was so focused. I was so focused. My energy wasn't depleted because I was looking all over the place. And number two, I wasn't comparing. I wasn't comparing because I didn't have anyone to compare myself to because I wasn't watching anyone. So I didn't know what they were doing. I had competitors. I had plenty of competitors, but I didn't, I didn't care what they were doing. I didn't know what they were doing. And I wish I could go back to that full naivete because man, I created from such passion and service and I am definitely more back there now, but it's one of those things. Once you like open Pandora's box, it's hard to go completely back, but I really urge you, especially if you're listening to this in your first few years, do everything you can to put your blinders on. Now I'm not saying don't have mentors. I hope you continue listening to this podcast. I hope you join the free events we have for you. I hope you follow on stories and all of that. But I'm talking about like direct competitors that aren't mentors at all. Like try your best to limit the time you spend watching. Because what I found was my best ideas, my best downloads came when I didn't watch what other people were doing. When I would go on walks, when I would be outside, when I would unplug, that's when things would come. Now, occasionally it's good to get some inspiration from other people, but you got to limit your time. Because man, comparison is just, it really stops people in their tracks. It stops so many incredible entrepreneurs from having the success I know they're meant to because they're like, oh, I'm just not them. I'm not them and they're the best. So why should I even try? And I've been there. I've said that. I've said that even recently. And that's when I had to check myself and go, are you kidding me? You're freaking awesome. And I give myself like a pep talk. I had to like pump myself up, right? We got to do that from time to time. And it's like, if you, I had a client do this recently. I'm like, if you didn't go on there and look at your story views or look at your, uh, look at your competition, would you even be feeling this way? You wouldn't, you wouldn't, you'd be on top of the world and so excited and creating from such service and creating from such passion and creating really to serve your audience. And so I really urge you to question yourself and go, am I, am I scrolling a little too much? Am I, is it, is it leading me to be lack of having lack of focus and or comparison? Cause if it is my friend, especially if you're in those first few years, that's going to slow you down so much. It's going to slow you down so much. And we had very quick growth in this third business because I didn't do that. I put my blinders on. I focused on myself and my clients and my people and what they needed from me. And I didn't pay attention to everyone else's awesome numbers. I didn't say, oh man, why don't I have those numbers? I said, cool, that's great. We don't have the same journey and I'm going to keep my blinders on. And I'm back there now. And I really encourage you to come here with me because it's a nice place to be. It's a nice place to be. It's very freeing. And man, you get the best creative downloads when you're from this place. So my friend, do the best you can to put those blinders on because comparison is, it's just so silly because there's no you 
And I know that's kind of corny, but it's just the truth. It's the truth. I have had so many clients and students over the last few years, hundreds start their business. And guess what? There's hundreds of people doing what they're doing online, yet they had success. Why? It seems saturated. One could say it is. One could say this industry is saturated. There's so many business coaches. There's so many health coaches. There's so many agency owners. There's so many copywriters, so many web designers. There's so many life coaches. Sure. Then why have all these people had so much success? Why have so many of these people gone full-time in their business when they're just starting this week? Well, you're not going to go full-time in one week, but you know what I mean? Like within this last year, it's so possible for you, but you've got to keep those blinders on. You got to find what's unique about you. And you've really got to find that like stand out quality. And I know you have it because it's you. It's already in you. I'm going to help you find it. I promise. That's what's coming up in the next few weeks. Definitely pay attention. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Um, thank you for just being my the best audience because I feel just so open and relaxed to just share carefree as per usual. Um, thank you in advance for sharing this episode. It means so much when you do. And stay tuned for some exciting stuff coming up in the next few episodes. And I'll see you in the next one.